This article is about the phonology of the Lithuanian language. Lithuanian has a phonemic inventory consisting of 11 vowels and 45 consonants, including 22 pairs of consonants distinguished by the presence or absence of palatalization. Consonants All Lithuanian consonants except, J, have two variants, a non-palatalized one and a palatalized one, represented by the IPA symbols in the chart i.e., B, B, D, D, and so on. The consonants, F, X, and their palatalized variants are only found in loanwords. Consonants preceding the front vowels, I, Ash, and, E, as well as any palatalized consonant or, J, are always moderately palatalized a feature Lithuanian has in common with the Belarusian and Russian languages but which is not present in the more closely related Latvian. Followed by back vowels, A, O, U, and, Consonants can also be palatalized, causing some vowels to shift. See the vowels section below. In such cases, the standard orthography inserts the letter I between the vowel and the preceding consonant, which is not pronounced separately, e.g., nor you no circumflex R, I want. Most of the non-palatalized and palatalized consonants form minimal pairs like suo, u, dog, tilde co, u, with this one, so they are independent phonemes, rather than allophones. All consonants are labialized before the back vowels u, o. The hard alveolar fricatives are also somewhat labialized in other positions. All of the hard consonants, especially are velarized. N, T, D are laminal denti alveolar and T, D, T, D are alveolar T, D before R. N has been variously described as palatalized laminal denti alveolar N and palatalized laminal alveolar n t d have been variously described as alveolo palatal c palatalized laminal denti alveolar t d with alveolar allophones t d before r word final t k and sometimes also p are aspirated t k p T, S, T, S, D, Z, D, Z, S, S, Z, Z, are dentalized laminal alveolar T, S, T, S, D, Z, D, Z, S, S, Z, Z, pronounced with the blade of the tongue very close to the upper front teeth, with the tip of the tongue resting behind lower front teeth. T, D, are laminal flat postalveolar T, D, i.e. they are pronounced without any palatalization at all. T, D, are alveolo palatal t d traditionally they are transcribed with t d but these symbols can be seen as equivalent to t d which is a less complex transcription v v have been variously described as fricatives v v and approximants is laminal denti alveolar l has been variously described as palatalized alveolar l and palatalized laminal denti alveolar l J has been variously described as an approximant J and a fricative. R R are apical alveolar R R. Before K N is realized as velar. Likewise, before K N is realized as is sometimes realized as. Since the palatalized variant is always velar, is preferred over. In the case of the soft velar consonants k, x, as well as the allophone of n, the softness palatalization is realized as slight fronting of the place of articulation to post palatal k, x. However, according to Augustatus 1964, the stops k are more strongly advanced, i.e. to palatal c, rather than post palatal k. Plosives have no audible release before other plosives. Vowels Lithuanian has six long vowels and five short ones not including the disputed e. Length has traditionally been considered the distinctive feature, though short vowels are also more centralized and long vowels more peripheral. e are restricted to loanwords. Many speakers merge the former with a are phonetically central, a diaresis. Phonologically, they behave like back vowels, in standard Lithuanian vowels a and generally are not pronounced after any palatalized consonant including j. In this position, they systematically shift to ash or and, respectively, galia power. 
Topic: Gale in the end L Gilia profound singular accusative. Gile acorn singular accusative L ash. On the other hand, in everyday language usually shifts to ash or sometimes even a if the vowel precedes a non-palatalized consonant, jacta, yacht singular accusative, or retas, rare, are often realized as j ash xta and r ash ts or sometimes even ya xta and r a ts instead of j xta and r ts as the following consonants, x, and t, are not palatalized. This phenomenon does not affect short vowels. Topic. Diphthongs Lithuanian is traditionally described as having nine diphthongs, i, o, a, e, u, oi, o, ui, i, e, and uo. However, some approaches I e. 1982, treat them as vowel sequences rather than diphthongs, indeed, the longer component depends on the type of stress, whereas in diphthongs, the longer segment is fixed. Lithuanian long stressed syllables can have either a rising or a falling tone. In specialized literature, they are marked with a tilde or an acute accent, respectively. The tone is especially clearly audible in diphthongs, since in the case of the rising tone, it makes the second element longer, e.g., I is pronounced, while the falling tone prolongs the first element, e.g., I is pronounced a circumflex. For more detailed information, see Lithuanian accentuation. The full set is as follows. Topic. Pitch accent The Lithuanian prosodic system is characterized by free accent and distinctive quantity. Its accentuation is sometimes described as a simple tone system, often called pitch accent. In lexical words, one syllable will be tonically prominent. A heavy syllable that is, a syllable containing a long vowel, diphthong, or a sonorant coda may have one of two tones, falling tone or acute tone or rising tone or circumflex tone. Light syllables syllables with short vowels and optionally also obstruent codas do not have the two-way contrast of heavy syllables. Common Lithuanian lexicographical practice uses three diacritic marks to indicate word accent, i.e., the tone and quantity of the accented syllable. They are used in the following way. The first or the only segment of a heavy syllable with a falling tone is indicated with an acute accent mark e.g., a, r, unless the first element is i or u followed by a tautosyllabic resonant, in which case it is marked with a grave accent mark e.g., ear, er. The second or the only segment of a heavy syllable with a rising tone is indicated with a circumflex accent e.g., a, r. Short accented syllables are indicated with a grave accent mark e.g., i, u. As said, Lithuanian has a free accent, which means that its position and type is not phonologically predictable and has to be learned by heart. This is the state of affairs inherited from Proto-Balto-Slavic and, to a lesser extent, from Proto-Indo-European. Lithuanian circumflex and acute syllables directly reflect Proto-Balto-Slavic acute and circumflex tone opposition. In a word final position, the tonal distinction in heavy syllables is almost neutralized, with a few minimal pairs remaining, such as sock, shoot, versus sock, shout. In other syllables, the two way contrast can be illustrated with pairs such as kos, porridge, versus kos, it soured, osti, to cool, versus osti, to don, drimba, lout, versus drim, ba, it falls, kaltas, chisel, versus kal, tas, guilty, tire, he, she, explored, versus tire, mush. Kos is perceived as having a falling pitch, ko circumflex e, or, ku, and indeed acoustic measurement strongly supports this. However, while kos is perceived as having a rising pitch, ke, or, ku, this is not supported acoustically. Measurements do not find a consistent tone associated with such syllables that distinguish them from unaccented heavy syllables. The distinguishing feature appears to be a negative one, that they do not have a falling tone. If diphthongs and truly long vowels are treated as sequences of vowels, then a single stress mark is sufficient for transcription. Asta, auta, greater than a circumflex t, it cools versus asta, a uta, greater than ut, it dons, kos, ku, greater than ko circumflex e porridge versus kos, ko o, greater than ko o e, it soured. The Lithuanian accentual system inherited another very important aspect from the Proto-Balto-Slavic period, and that is the accentual mobility. 
Accents can alternate throughout the inflection of a word by both the syllable position and type. Parallels can be drawn with some modern Slavic languages, namely Russian, Serbo-Croatian and Slovene. Accentual mobility is prominent in nominal stems, while verbal stems mostly demonstrate phonologically predictable patterns. Lithuanian nominal stems are commonly divided into four accentual classes, usually referred to by their numbers. Accent paradigm 1, fixed columnar accent on a non-desonential syllable. If the accent is on a pre-desonential syllable, it carries the acute tone. Accent paradigm 2, alternation of accent on a short or circumflex pre-desonential syllable with desonential accentuation. Accent paradigm 3, alternation of accent on a non-desonential syllable with desonential accentuation. If the accent is on a pre-desonential syllable, it carries the acute tone. Accent paradigm 4, alternation of accent on short or circumflex pre-desonential syllable with desonential accentuation. The previously described accentual system primarily applies to the Western Oxtatian dialect on which the standard Lithuanian literary language is based. The speakers of the other group of Lithuanian dialects, Samogitian, have a very different accentual system, and they do not adopt standard accentuation when speaking the standard idiom. Speakers of the major cities, such as Vilnius, Kaunas and Klaipeda, with mixed populations generally do not have intonational oppositions in spoken language, even when they speak the standard idiom. Topic change and variation The changes and variation in Lithuanian phonetics include diachronic changes of a quality of a phoneme, alternations, dialectal variation, variation between corresponding sounds of individual inflectional morphemes of the same grammatical category, which is at the same time qualitative and quantitative, diachronic and synchronic. The diachronic qualitative phonemic changes include o, o, a, a narrowing of a more open vowel, u o o turnings. Among examples of the variation between sounds of different inflectional morphemes of a certain grammatical category there is historical shortening of a declensional ending a in some positions, matina mother, nom. sg, inst r, sg, matinos gen, sg. Synchronous variation between shorter more recent and longer more archaic personal endings in verbs, depending on final position, kaliu I am lifting something kaliosi I am getting up reflexive, keli you are lifting kaliesi you get up, kelyame we are lifting kelyames we get up. Examples of alternation include variation between d, t, and palatalized d, t, respectively, nom. S, g. Pat s, myself, himself, itself, masculine gender, gen. Sg. Pat I ease, dat. Sg. Pak I am, jachu, I feel, jati, you feel, gurdzu, I hear, gurdi, you hear. Variation between a lengthened, uttered in a falling, lengthened tone and a short a and e alike only if these sounds end a syllable, variation between a long, uttered in a falling, lengthened tone and a short i at an ending of a word, depending on accentual position, vikaras v a curs nominative and evening, vikar v r locative in the evening, radinis rod ni s nom. A finding, a find, radinio, rod dno, genitive from rasti arst to find, pashakalas a dish, course, pashakali nom. Plural. From patiakti to serve a dish, vesti to lead, to marry vedimus a noun for an action vedimus participle who is being led, married, baltinis cloth which is being whitened, baltinis white dial, white of the egg derivatives from baltas white variation in sounds takes place in word formation. Some examples, the examples in the table are given as an overview. The word formation comprises many words not given here. For example, any verb can have an adjective made by the same pattern: sverti, sverus, valid, ponderous, sverti, sverus, slopable, vita, vagus, for whom it is characteristic to chase or to be chased, pilti, pilus, pori. But for example, visti, vislus, prolific, not visus, which could conflict with an adjective of a similar form, visus, all, entire. Many verbs, besides a noun derivative with the ending imas, can have different derivatives of the same meaning, pilti, pilimas, pila, pilus they mean the act of the verb, a pouring of any non-solid material, the first two have meanings that look almost identical but are drawn apart from a direct link with the verb, pilimas, a bank, an embankment, pila, pelting, spanking, whipping, the word svoris, a weight, for example, does not have the meaning of an act of weighing. There are also many other derivatives and patterns of derivation. 